Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kodash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the elect. And I'm um, just going to go into this this uh, this article here. All right, some interesting news. This is from ZeroHedge.com, and it says a uh, bigger mess than last year. Global supply chain crisis could emerge by summer. All right. And so I'm going to read real briefly through this article and, um, you know, just to show you that how uh, these that things are not getting any better. You know, things are not getting any better. People thought that this um, this demic was a uh, was basically going to be a slack of me. There we go. Yeah, people thought that this this demic being over meant that, you know, everything else was over, you know, and, and life could go back to the way it was. But now they're starting to see and realize that that was just uh, one step of the plan. All right. One phase of the plan. So it says here, the next round of supply chain bottlenecks could be even greater than last year's massive congestion at ports as China's zero C policy has, uh, has shuttered factories and locked down major cities like Shenzhen and Shanghai. Um, I'm just going to skim through just to hit the main points. All right, Lowell, and it'll be a brief video. Uh, but let's see here. All right, so it says here, we expect a big, a bigger mess than last year said uh, Jacquees uh, Vander, Vander Meeren, the chief uh, executive officer at the port of Antwerp, Europe's second busiest uh, four container volume in an interview. It will have a negative impact and a big negative impact for the whole of 2022. You hear that? So just when you thought things were going to get better, you couldn't be more wrong. Now, they're saying that based on China's policy of having basically zero cases and all of that, that is like uh, causing their, their cities to be on lockdown. And that's that's um, causing more congestion at their ports. All right. And so when they finally reopen, that's going to cause a whole influx of all those uh, uh, containers that have been backed up all at once. And that's going to slow things down even more. Now you have here, it says, um, once China reopens and those vessels begin shipping products worldwide, Freight, uh, Freight Waves founder and CEO Craig Fuller warns, this will wreck your summer. You hear that? This will wreck your summer. Now it says here, the, the coming volume uh, drop in ocean container volumes leaving China for U.S. ports is staggering. Yeah, because you you remember, uh, 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 there are a lot of containers that come from China. All right, so for all that influx that have been held there at those docks, those ports, all coming here at once is going to be too much. It says here, our ocean TEU volume index in sonar now has a 14-day forward look at volumes, and it looks ugly. By early May 2022, we could see the lowest levels we've seen since May of 2020. You see? It says, once product export activities resume and a large volume of vessels make their way to the U.S. Uh, West Coast ports, we expect waiting times to increase significantly. Because, not, like I said, you're going to have an influx that's going to be overwhelming. And they said this is going to be worse than 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 what was there uh, last year. Um, let's see what else we have here. They have some images of these uh, ships here, all right, at these ports. Okay, it says. Uh, let's see. Yep, it says congestion in Europe is already severe, and top ports such as Rotterdam, Hamburg and Antwerp are working above capacity. The global impacts of this current bottleneck are expected for summer and will greatly increase once China locks 
China lockdowns are eased. According to an article in Freight Waves, this could turn into the most significant supply chain issue since the demic start in chi uh, if China's shipping congestion isn't cleared up soon. So you can already see it's one problem after the other after the other. All right, so I'm going to get a few quick precepts on this because as all these things are going on, we're watching, we're warning, we're letting you know, hey, look, this is happening here. Hey, look, this is happening here. And the average individual is still going about. And, and, and sometimes it's not just that they don't know, but they don't care. You know, you, the scriptures talk about it, right? They're destroyed for lack of knowledge. And that's because it's not that they don't have access to it. It's they don't they don't care for it. They don't want it. So Isaiah 10 and 3 says, And what will ye do in the day of visitation and in the desolation which shall come from far? To whom will ye flee for help? And where will ye leave your glory? Yeah, because the time that they should have taken to prepare, right, and to get themselves right, they didn't. They spent that time, quote unquote, chasing the bag, grinding, doing everything else but turning to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And that's the only way out through Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. So, because of them failing to prepare, they were preparing to fail, and they're gonna they're gonna find that out the hard way. All right, and a, a big part of that <coughs> is um, Isaiah thirty three and six. It says, "And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times, and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure." Yeah, because see, as we are serving the Lord, we're gaining that crucial wisdom knowledge and understanding all right of the name of the lord of how the lord works how things go what the prophecies are what what are do's and don'ts what to do in certain situations what did our forefathers do in certain situations so we learn from all these things that we can we can apply now but for a lot of these israelites that don't care that are not preparing that are going about living their every day to day life. Eventually, they're gonna. It's gonna. It's gonna hit them when it hits home. But the only thing is, when it hits home, it's too late to prepare. It's too late to do anything about it then. And the Lord said, "They shall seek me uh, in their affliction. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me." Yeah, because people are gonna be seeking the Lord when they start going through, you know, troubles and and, and afflictions. But the Lord is gonna say, "Look, I was I was here. I had my prophets here for for years." You know, telling you to get right, and you didn't care. So don't come to me now because I don't care. And that's going to be a painful uh, realization for a lot of people. All right. Now, in this society, you have uh, um, quote-unquote experts that are set up to uh, calm people down. They're set up to speak in ways that, that uh, lead or promote damage control. Right. In ways where it calms people down so they don't panic. Well, when all these things finally go down, there's going to be nothing they can tell you. Second, Ezra 16 and 23, it says, and the dead shall be cast out as dung. Because that's how that's how death is going to be so frequent that just as you can walk down the street and see dung, whether do or dog feces or bird feces or whatever, that's how common it will be to see a dead body. Because it's gonna be it's gonna be so much death going on. And that's gonna be a scary thing. It says, and and there shall be no man to comfort them, for the earth shall be wasted and the cities shall be cast down. See? So so pretty much as these things are going on, people are gonna be seeking comfort. They're gonna be seeking answers. They're gonna be hoping somebody can get on the news and tell them it's okay, we have it under control. In a few days, things will be back to normal. Nobody's going to do that. Because nobody's going to be able to tell you that it's, it's okay. All right, and that's going to that's gonna cause the panic to go even through the roof. Because the people they look to for that comfort are going to tell them, look, we don't even know what's going on. So you're pretty much out there on your own. All right, we've never seen anything like this before, so we don't know how to handle it. And, and hey, that's when with Isaiah 33 and 6 would be very, very crucial. All right, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time. So, you know, these people better get ready. All right, they better get ready. Because the Lord is not playing, and he's getting ready to close the show in this place. 
but anyway, that was just a quick update. You know, like I said, uh, Low Willing was brief. And um, Low Willing, you were edified and updated. In closing, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakodash. And until next time, Shalom.